But you mentioned RJ. Year three now. People get so caught up with they made this list and RJ wasn't on it. How about this list and RJ's not on it? They're making this ranking and RJ's not on it. Man, who cares? Like, why do we care about that stuff? So I mean, the, Knicks, the Knicks fans want respect. They want uh, respect, huh? They want respect, man. Sports Illustrated left them off the top 100. ESPN man. left them off the top 100. The Knicks fans, they want. we want our respect. We want Did it. You, do you see the names of the people that make these lists? Like, when ESPN made their list, did they ask me to help them? No. They didn't ask me. Like, so, like, who are they asking? Like, come on. Like, it was Ken, it's all Kellerman, trust me. Kellerman's behind it. <laughs> Kellerman's pulling <laughs> the strings. <laughs> He's telling them, no, <laughs> this. no, but I mean, like, I don't, I could give a damn about that stuff. Now, does it bother me that, you know, that he's not, uh, that he's not all rookie? Does it bother me that he's not in the rising stars game? Like, is that stuff? Yeah. Yeah. That, that I'm like, what the hell are mm-hmm, we doing? Because, mm-hmm. oh, by the way, if you've seen any of the redrafts from the 2019 draft, he's always three. Yeah. Then nobody changes that. Yeah. He's always yeah. three. So that tells me he's still right exactly where he belongs. But I'm curious to see what jump he makes. And if he can, because if you add Kemba, who's ball dominant, going to mm-hmm. score. Mm-hmm. Julius obviously is going to have the ball and he's scoring. Fournier's ball dominant, going to yeah. score. Well, what does RJ become? Like, what does RJ become? Because we know what he is. We know that another guy one-on-one that he's too strong for most guards to, to cover. Mm-hmm. He, he dominates you physically, right? But where does he fit? How's he going to get his, you know, five, six, seven, eight shots a game that can get him close to 20, get to the line, which he's starting to learn how to do. Much better free throw shooter than we gave him credit for last year. A good rebounder for a guard. Yeah. Better defender as the year went on, learning and learning and learning how to be that guy that with his size and strength can, can be a good defender. Like, CP, what is he going to be on a team that just added two vets that you know are all about score first? I I think it's an interesting question. Um, On the Kemba dynamic, the one thing I can say about Kemba is he's going to be a better better facilitator and less tunnel vision uh, than Peyton was for RJ. So I think he'll (laughs) he'll still have some opportunities. He's... He's blind in one eye, Yo, and it's gosh. always the side of the court that RJ's on. Which oh, eye is? Wherever RJ goodness, is, it's that man. eye. My goodness, man. So, we can say it now. We can say it now. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I do believe, yes, Kemba's going to be more ball dominant and, and relied on to score. And I think rightfully so, because like I said, I think we, we need a more reliable second guy to Julius uh, and, and I think Kemba can bring that until we see what, what RJ can continue to be. But... I think Kemba will, will will find some chemistry with RJ, find him in some catch and suit situations. RJ has been working on his shooting off the bounce, more off of the dribble, as as uh, his trainer Drew Hanlon said. So, will we see more of that? Will we see him finish a little bit better at the rim or through the mid range? I think those he's are also got he's got he, to. He's got to be a guy because we know he's not an explosive jumper. Yeah, but he's got to stop getting his shot blocked when he gets to the rim because he gets to the rim at ease, at right? Ease. RJ, I feel like what we learned about him this past year, he's actually really good corner three shooter. Yeah, he was solid. Solid. Yeah, like like you know, up higher, not so much. But but if you put him in the corner, and nobody wants to do that, nobody wants to put baby in the corner. But I, I mean, it it could work with spacing, and he could eat there in the corner, especially if Kemba's running high screen roll, right? And he just there's your kick out right there. Yeah, right. So I, I I'm hoping he can find his way. Because he's not going to be a primary, he's not going to be a secondary in this offense. Yeah. He, he can't with the talent that they have here. Unless, of course, he shows up and he's off the charts better than everybody yeah. else. I, of course, I would also say, though, in transition it is where he shines. And I think when you add in Kemba, you add in Fournier along with Julius and RJ, now you have four guys that can run the break for you. And I think yep. that's where we need to, what we need to be doing. We need to get out and run. You add Rose mm-hmm. in the mix. If he's out there with Rose, you know, Burks, IQ, I think getting RJ out there in in running and in, in transition is also an area where he can, he can excel. So I think they'll find their ways. I'm um, still going to be interesting to see how he mixes with Kemba and Fournier. But I, I on the optimistic side, I, I like the fact that they're better facilitators than uh, Bullock and what Peyton gave us. So I think we'll see what happens. But a big question for me for RJ is on the defensive side. 
you know, because now he's going to be drawing a lot of those tough assignments, a lot of those wings uh, that Bullock used to take on last year. You know, Bullock was kind of that punching bag for the Knicks defense in that he would take on the tough assignments. You know, it wasn't always locked down, but he would take a lot of pressure off of the guards, especially RJ and some of the point guards as well, by taking on those tough assignments. So this year, uh, RJ is going to have to be that guy. Who's gu- who, who's guarding Harden? Who's guarding who's guard KD? Harden. That's a fact. Who, who's who's guarding him? That's a like, fact. I'm not saying like Reggie Bullock made anybody shaking their boots, but Reg, at least Reggie was in the league long enough to kind of know, you know, six eight. I know, I know, you know what they're about, and I'll give them all. I'll give them all I got. Um, you know, that's going to be interesting. You know, interesting to see how they yeah. play that yeah. too. You know, defensively. That's why I said I think for Tibbs this year might be a little bit more of a challenge defensively than was last year because last year was a lot easier with that group to sort of say we start with defense like because we don't have a ton of offense here now it's a different mentality and and that yeah can rj emerge as one of those guys man i you know again a very valuable player in this franchise very valuable player for this team a lot of what you know the knicks successful failures this year a lot of that is now on rj's shoulders you know it's time it's time for him to take a big step now i i said on a previous show that for me the way that i evaluate him taking a big step is for me is he defensively um just because no peyton no bullock is fournier is fournier gonna guard you know some of these top wings no is it gonna be burks he's not starting it has to be rj so You know, when I talk about off-season additions, when you look at the Milwaukee Bucks, you know, they had Middleton multiple years in Giannis. A lot of times we look at off-season additions and we don't think about the internal off-season additions Mm -hmm. of players getting better, like uh, Julius Randle. Julius Randle wasn't a new transaction last off-season, but that was an off-season addition in terms of his improvement. So if he can get better and he can take that next step up defensively, if if he could take on the challenge... I think that'll be a big step for him becoming a complete player um, and for the Knicks organization. I, I would expect RJ to take another step forward. We heard that, you know, Drew Hannon wanted to practice with RJ doing off the dribble type shot, uh, off the dribble shooting. So we'll see if how how far he takes that. But I, I could see RJ getting up to 20 points a season. I mean, if we look at the Knicks as a team last season, they were ranked 26 in how many points they averaged throughout the season with 100 and was 107 points uh, per game. Top team was the Milwaukee Bucks with 120. So there's some room, you know, even with the addition of Evan Fournier and Kimball Walker to the team, you know, I expect the offense to be a little bit more open for RJ to get better looks too. It's not going to be as close as it was with either with just having Reggie Bullock as a three point option. Now you have four guys who can shoot the three point shot. So that opens it up for RJ. So I don't think 20 points to go from 17 to 20 is going to be that difficult for him, especially if he's able to even draw more contact from, for fouling too. If they're changing the foul, the fouling rules and not giving players like the the ability to like make was the uh, unnatural movement, then they're actually going to call legitimate fouls this season. I can see him still getting there. You know, he got up to 17. Uh, CP, you and I discussed even last season when he was a rookie that he can get up to 18 if he can hit his mid-range yeah. shots, which he started to do. He hit three-pointers, which he started to do. And he got to the line. He was hitting his free throws. He hit 72%, I believe, from from uh, the free throw line. So I can see RJ get to, to 20. I think for him, you know, the thing that I really want to see from him is a little bit more playmaking this season. I think that's going to mm. be the real question is, can he be another option? You know, we're no, we know we're going to get Evan Fournier who's going to contribute to some playmaking, be like a second or third option on the team. You're going to have Julius Randle, who I presume to still be either, I guess, the second or the primary, depending on how Tibbs wants to run this team. You got Kimball Walker out there who can help as well. So seeing if RJ can also facilitate, get other guys involved, and whether it's just dribble penetration, you know, he did he did better finishing around the – he did improve finishing around the rim and using his right hand as well. So – Let's see if he can take that to another level. CP with having more guys that can move the ball in Fournier and Kimball Walker, we're going to have um, less situations of when we have a fast break, we, we're not going to know what to do with it. We're going to have more situations where you can see that the ball is going to be moving around a lot more. And I, I think that RJ Baird is going to thrive in that, especially with the starting unit. I, I, I'm having a hard time predicting points. I, I love the confidence in, uh, in my man JD and in my man Alex in the 20. I, I really want – my heart, my R.J. Barrett fandom is sitting here saying, year three, give me 21 a game. Yeah. I'm ready to yeah. see it. 
But because of the additions and everything we've done, I, I'm just I and, and to me it wouldn't be a, a, a bad thing. But I'm looking more around like a 19.4 kind of uh, kind of rise. I think he's going to go from 17 to 19, which to me is still not bad. But it's just when we have the we have weapons, you know, and we have firepower off the bench. It's just going to be I see the Knicks being a little bit more of a spread offense rather than just the go to kind of mm-hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. And another uh, just a little tidbit. I'm mm-hmm. looking at the steals. I think RJ Barrett steals are going to jump up a little bit this mm-hmm. year. I think he's going to average around 1.3, 1.4 steals per game. I, I'm looking at that one. I think that the, def- the defense we're not talking enough about with RJ Barrett. I think he might up that up a little bit, but definitely going to see a nice year three out of rg bear for sure 